Well, several bills regarding the legalization of marijuana have been introduced at the State House this session, but it's unlikely the state will join its neighbors in legalizing recreational and medical marijuana sales. We're joined now by Ethan Sandweiss, who went up to Michigan to see what the buzz is all about. Yeah, Joe, uh, videographer Devin Ridgway and I drove to a dispensary in Michigan just a few miles from the border. We were able to take a tour of a grow house and uh, talk about Hoosiers who cross state lines to purchase marijuana legally. Visit a marijuana dispensary in Niles, Michigan, and you're likely to find a lot of Indiana license plates in the parking lot. The town of fewer than 12,000 people boasts eight dispensaries three miles from the state line. For Hoosiers such as Elkhart resident Nathan Cray, buying legal marijuana in Michigan is as easy as visiting the coffee shop. It's pretty convenient, but I'm actually, I'm, I would support it being legal in Indiana too. Cray is a Marine Corps veteran and bodybuilder. He was among a stream of Indiana shoppers at Southland Farms on a recent Friday afternoon. Also, very very Cray purchased half an ounce of indica flour, which he said helps relieve his anxiety and recover after a workout. I, I tend to smoke in Michigan where it's legal. Um, big fan of the legal weed scene. But not everyone who shops in Michigan smokes in Michigan. Many Indiana customers take marijuana back to their homes. By doing so, these legal shoppers violate both Indiana and federal law. Recreational marijuana is legal in Michigan as it is in Illinois. Medical marijuana is legal in Ohio and Kentucky forbids selling marijuana, but has medical exceptions for its use. Indiana does not. Indiana stores can sell some cannabis products, including CBD and Delta-8 THC. However, the main psychoactive compound in marijuana, Delta-9 THC, remains illegal in the state. How you doing? Hey, okay, you all right? Yeah. Yeah, Mike. Thanks for coming back in. We appreciate your business. Mike Noonan is the owner and founder of Southland Farms. He moved to Niles from Chicago because he said Michigan law makes it easy for him to both sell marijuana and grow it in-house. Very few states give small folks an opportunity to both produce the product and sell it to the public and being able to do it all in one spot was what was really important to us. Noonan said he chose Niles because he's familiar with the area, but being close to the state line has been good for business. Just south of Niles is South Bend, Indiana's fourth largest city. Noonan estimates that around 40% of his customers come from Indiana, many of whom use marijuana to cope with illness. We get a lot of Indiana folks who are looking for medicinal relief. Whether it's for their, their self or a loved one, they get diagnosed with a serious condition or they develop a chronic condition. Noonan said his store follows Michigan laws, but beyond that, he isn't responsible for what happens with his product. According to him, plenty of Hoosiers go home with their cannabis. We see them all the time. They, they go to their car, they open the trunk, they lock it in the trunk, and off they go because, you know, denying patients the medicine that they deserve is really something that uh, uh, we're opposed to here. Bringing small amounts of cannabis into Indiana is a crime, but that law is difficult to enforce. An officer needs probable cause to search a vehicle, like THC products sitting out in the open, and hundreds of cars pass between South Bend and Niles every day. According to South Bend Police Lieutenant Kyle Dombrowski, his department isn't out to get residents with small quantities of cannabis. This is where discretion on law enforcement, having that police community relation aspect of uh, whether it's writing a ticket for it, turning it in, or turning it in as found property and not pursuing criminal charges. Uh, every situation is different. The DEA isn't particularly focused on sending resources to stop Hoosiers taking dispensary marijuana between states either. Look, that's what warrants federal prosecution if it's you know, more than 100, pounds, uh, 100 plants with a root system or thousands of pounds of marijuana. Marijuana is big business in Michigan. According to the state government, December sales set a record with consumers spending over $221 million. For the 2021 fiscal year, Michigan collected $172 million in licensing and tax revenue, which was used for road maintenance and education or sent back to municipalities. Several Indiana lawmakers have proposed legislation that would legalize marijuana, but so far they've had difficulty gaining traction. Democratic State Senator David Nitskotsky proposed Senate Bill 336, one of about a dozen marijuana bills introduced this session. If passed, Senate Bill 336 would enable cannabis to be sold and taxed in the state. When you see the polls and you see the amount of people, uh, it just there's it makes no good sense not to just legalize it and do it correctly. Make sure you've got the right framework in place. Despite the fact that a majority of Hoosiers want legalization, state lawmakers have been slow to follow. 
In the meantime, Indiana residents will continue crossing into neighbor states to purchase marijuana. Cray expects that one day they won't have to. I expect Indiana and other states to follow suit, like Michigan and states that have legalized it for recreational use and medical. Um, I think it's only a good thing. So, Ethan, some of the bills in the state house would make a pathway to, to decriminalize the legalization, but not, not fully legalize it. Some allow medical, uh, not recreational. Does having that broad range kind of hurt its chance, chances of passing? Well, Senator Nizgotsky, who wrote legislation to legalize recreational marijuana, says for supporters it's more important to get some legislation passed, even if it's not the full amount that he wants. We don't need every aspect of every bill, but uh, well, let's let's form a well, we sort of do have a coalition, but uh, let's put them all together and put the best parts of every one and let's let's just get this done. Uh, Niskowski sees the impact of marijuana laws up close. Not only does his district border Michigan, he actually lives 10 minutes away from Niles and 40 percent of the workers at his family's company actually come from Michigan. He says it's unfair for employees to be able to do something legally in one state, but not in another. I saw one Hoosier coming from Michigan kind of got caught with more than his fair share. Yeah, Joe, it, it all came from a traffic stop when Matthew Scott Bell of Beach Grove was pulled over uh, for speeding a few miles from the border of in Steuben County. Uh, state police said there was a sealed package of gummies in clear view in the passenger seat. State police said a search of Bell's car turned up eight pounds of marijuana and seven pounds of edibles. Bell was preliminarily charged with possession and dealing marijuana. All right, Ethan, thank you very much. Appreciate your reporting.